In this video, I'm going to talk about eye dropping your fountain pens. For those new to the fountain pen game, eye dropping means filling your fountain pens with one of these, an eyedropper, like so. While some pens are designed to be filled this way, such as these pens, there are also a huge number of cartridge converter pens, like these pens, that could easily be turned into eye droppers. Eye dropper filling gives your pen a huge ink capacity, which is good for anyone who dislikes refilling their pens often, but is really good for artists who don't want to run out of ink during long drawing sessions. I'm going to go over the advantages of eye dropping and why you should definitely give it a try, and the disadvantages of doing so, and why you might want to avoid it. Before the invention of various filling mechanisms in the first decade of the 20th century, most fountain pens were eyedroppers, such as this little Waterman 72 and a half. Then with self-filling pens, such as this lever filler becoming the norm, eyedrop fillers all but disappeared. Eyedropping made an unofficial comeback in the middle of the century with the advent of the cartridge converter pen. Because such pens didn't have a built-in filling mechanisms, the barrels in them were entirely empty, which allowed enthusiasts to convert them into eyedrop filling pens. Nowadays, eyedrop fountain pens have made a comeback with a number of companies producing pens specifically designed for this purpose. As I already stated, the main reason to eyedrop your pens is ink capacity. Self-filling pens have mechanisms that fill up a large part of the barrel, which limits the amount of ink a pen can hold. Cartridge converters hold even less. Take this Platinum Preppy, for example. The converter for it holds about half a milliliter of ink, and the cartridge for it holds a little bit over one milliliter. However, as an eyedropper, it holds three times as much ink as a cartridge, at around three milliliters. And the Preppy is a relatively small pen. This Noodler's Ahab, when eyedroppered, holds as much as six milliliters. One advantage is that eyedrop fillers are easier to maintain. Self-filling pens have moving parts, which in vintage pens can be quite delicate. This Waterman 54 is a lever filler, and the lever mechanism, which creates pressure on the rubber sack inside the barrel, is quite delicate and prone to breaking. Even if you're extra careful, the rubber sack inside will harden over time and need replacing. Neither is a huge repair, but consider that this eyedropper will never experience such problems. Furthermore, because the barrel in this one is completely empty, it has many, many times the incapacity of the 54, even though it's a much smaller pen. This argument is not limited to vintage lever filling pens, but to every other self-filling mechanism, vintage or modern. The sturdiest piston filler, such as this Pelican 140, will eventually suffer a broken piston rod or will need a new plunger. An eyedropper will never suffer such problems. The other advantage is that eyedroppers are also much easier to clean. This Twisby Eco, for example, is one of the easiest piston filling pens to clean, being completely disassemblable. Yet, it's still a giant pain in the butt to take apart, requiring a proprietary wrench, and that you watch a YouTube video on how to do it properly. Nothing like that is needed with an eyedropper. All I have to do is open it up, flush the nib, flush the barrel, and I'm good to go. What are other advantages? Well, sometimes eye dropping a pen will actually improve the flow, though this is highly dependent on the pen. And if you're using a demonstrator, here is another advantage. Eye dropping shows off the beautiful colors. It's pretty neat how this ink looks like Coca-Cola sloshing inside an old Coke bottle. You might argue that eye dropping is messy and time consuming, but that's not the case. It might take a few extra seconds to fill up a pen, and it's probably not something you want to be doing out and about, but is it really that much of an issue? It's actually one of the cleaner methods of filling your pen, since you don't have to submerge a pen into the ink up to the section and then have to wipe it down afterward. Also, since you're drawing up ink with an eyedropper, you can use all of the ink in the bottle way past the point where you can easily fill up your self-filling pens because the ink level is too shallow. Okay, now for the disadvantages of eyedropper filling. To my mind, there is only one, and it is this. Eyedrop fillers have a tendency to burp, that is to say, spill drops of ink onto your paper. This is caused by your hand warming up the barrel, which in turn warms up the air inside the pen. This expanding warm air pushes ink into the feed, making the pen burp. This effect is dependent on a number of factors, the material of the barrel and its thickness, the ambient air temperature, and I also suppose the warmth of your hands. Furthermore, some feed and nib designs will have a greater tendency to burp than others. Given the complex of factors that cause burping, whether a pen will burp when used as an eyedropper is very hard to anticipate. All that can be done is to try the pen as an eyedropper and see how it works. That said, there are a number of pens that have a long track record of being successfully turned into eyedroppers, and I'll give you some recommendations towards the end of this video. While burping is certainly annoying, there are ways to mitigate it. Since the main culprit is expanding air, burping can be prevented by not allowing the barrel to get too empty. Of course, this negates the whole point of eye dropping, which is the ability to go a long time without having to refill. But I found that burping usually becomes a problem when the pen barrel is less than half full, and that's still quite a bit of ink to go through without refilling. This is why I strongly recommend using clear demonstrators when eye dropping. Once you get a sense of what the ink level is when the burping starts, you can easily maintain the right ink level and prevent any burping problems. 
For me, burping really is not such a big deal, and I think many artists will feel the same way. Prior to getting into fountain pens, I drew with a dip pen for three decades, and with dip pens, you have to constantly be aware of how much ink is on the nib. I usually have a paper towel handy next to me when drawing, and when I see ink build up on the feed, I give the pen a little shake and the problem is solved. A rather elegant solution to the burping problem is a design featured in Opus 88 fountain pens. These pens, at first glance, look like they have some kind of filling mechanism, but in fact, all three are eyedropper filling pens with a unique feature, a shutoff valve that seals the larger reservoir here with the smaller reservoir right here, effectively stopping the burping problem, having the additional benefit of making this pen perfectly safe for air travel. Of course, one of the main advantages of eye dropping, the fact that it eliminates moving parts, is lost here, as well as the fact that the rod and twisting mechanism take up additional space in the barrel. It also makes the pen much more difficult to clean. But we can't have everything in life now, can we? Okay, now let's talk about how to convert a pen into an eyedropper. Our potential candidate has to be a cartridge converter pen with a solid plastic barrel, meaning that our ink reservoir cannot be composed of several parts which can leak or contain any metal which is going to corrode. For instance, you can make a successful conversion with this Pilot Falcon because the body is entirely plastic on the inside. And then, the barrel threads are also plastic. However, the custom 912 cannot be converted because even though the barrel is completely plastic on the inside, the section threads here are metal, which are prone to corrosion. One of the cheapest and most effective eyedropper conversions uses this pen, the Platinum Preppy, which can be bought for under $4. Since this pen is not designed as an eyedropper, you're going to need two things to make the conversion safe, silicone grease and a small washer that looks like this that can be purchased at gouletpens.com. All you need to do is put on the washer and apply a thin layer of silicone to the barrel threads and you're ready to fill the pen like so. Many eyedroppers already come with a washer installed, but I still recommend you grease up the threads as a secondary precaution. This preppy conversion works absolutely great, and I never had any burping problems with it, which is why it's one of the more popular pens to convert. The only drawback is that the plastic on the preppy is cheap, and since there are no supporting metal o-rings, it's prone to cracking. I've had three preppies crack after a few years of use, and though they're cheap to replace, the mess created by a leaking eyedropper is pretty substantial. This is a good entry into eyedropping, however, and I still highly recommend it, because these preppies, despite their cheapness, have very smooth, well-performing nibs. Just watch out for cracks in the barrel. Some popular modern cartridge converter pens that are commonly used as eyedroppers are the Platinum Preppy, the Pilot Prera, the Coeco Sport, and the Noodler's Ahab. And of course, nowadays plenty of pens are actually designed to be eyedroppers, such as the pens made by PenBBS or Moonman. Here is a unique eyedropper from PenBBS model 469, which is essentially two little eyedroppers back to back. Because the barrel of the pen serves as the ink reservoir, eyedroppers can be very compact and still have very excellent ink capacity. And of course, if you want to eliminate the risk of burping altogether, the pens made by Opus 88 with their unique shutoff mechanisms are an absolutely fantastic choice. I hope you found this short introduction to eyedropping useful. For artists who go through a lot of ink quickly and often draw out of their studios, I think eyedropping is a great option, even if you don't care about ease of cleaning or maintenance. And while the burping issue can be a nuisance in some pens, it's not universal, and even then, it's not such a big drawback. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and I'll do my best to respond.